story time. A few years back, my sister and I were just sitting there, being bored beyond all reason. I can't remember what we were doing exactly, but I told her at one point, hey, you should tell me a story. Tell me a funny story. And she was like, what about? And I was like, mm, you know what? Tell me about the origin of cheese. Where did it come from? How did we get it? And uh, what proceeded out of her mouth was the single greatest story I have ever heard over the course of all of my days. And uh, it's stuck to me even now, all these years later, five or six years later. So I have to tell it to y'all. And uh, this is it. On the origin of cheese. The year is 1492. Columbus is just about to sail the ocean blue because he has been given a very special quest from the Queen of Spain. To find the Fountain of Youth. Rumor has it, it is located in the Americas. And he has to go find it, right? Track it down for his queen so that she can be young and beautiful for forever or whatever. Alright, so he sets sail. Him and his entourage are ships. They sail for 40 days, 40 nights. Very long time. They're buffeted by storms and all that. They finally arrive in the Americas. And they want to go searching for the Fountain of Youth, right? So they look everywhere. They look up. They look down. They finally find it in the Bahamas somewhere. I don't know. See, the reason... The Fountain of Youth hadn't been discovered yet by anyone, really, it was because this fountain wasn't exactly made of water. It was made out of something much, much different. It was made out of milk. Christopher Columbus, after such a long time searching, finally finds the Fountain of Youth, and it is indeed made out of milk, not water, as everyone had thought, which is why they had had such a hard time finding it. Christopher Columbus, he goes to the spring and he starts bottling up all of this milk. Now, he doesn't drink any for himself because he had read Tuck Everlasting as a kid, but he decided, I need to bring it back for my queen because she'd requested this, you know? It's her deal if she wants to have youthful immortality forever and always. So, uh, he bottles it up and brings it back to the queen of Spain. And for those of you who don't know, Tuck Everlasting is a book and also a very lovely musical about... Uh, this family that discovers the Fountain of Youth and then drinks out of it and then discovers, you know, they can't die no matter what. And that immortality is actually awful and it's terrible and you should definitely give it a read. It's, it's quite interesting. And now for the part where I realize that I don't like half of what I did and I need to undo it all. Every time, man. Every time. So Christopher Columbus is beginning his journey back to Spain. However, on the way there, they are... Caught in this ginormous storm in the middle of the, what would it be, the Atlantic Ocean, right? In the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, they're caught in this huge storm. And instead of sailing back to Spain from the Americas, they end up in Africa. Completely different continent. Big oops there. Now, Christopher Columbus and his followers, once they arrive on the coast of Africa, it's in the middle of a giant storm, right? So instead of just kind of docking peacefully they're actually like their boat is smashed against like the side of a cliff or whatever and they end up stranded their boat broken near this small coastal town um somewhere right on the middle of the coast of africa not the best situation ever right so they all wait out the storm and once the storm has you know passed i'm almost out of blocks oh my gosh you have no idea how much lapis i had to mine for all this i might need to go find more Anyways, uh, once the storm had finally passed and everything, they decided to go and meet the locals and see if they could barter for any sort of goods, maybe repair their ship, and see what exactly they can do to get back home to Spain. So Christopher and his crew goes through all the rubble and scavenges what they can off the ship, and that includes the jars of magical milk that they had found. Now, the milk had gotten pretty shaked up in the storm. However, it, it looked intact, so that was good. They were hoping that they could keep it a secret. However, they were willing to trade it if need be. So the crew brings everything they have to the locals, and the locals are very excited to see them. They uh, have a lot of interesting things they want to trade for. They manage to trade clothes for some food. They manage to trade, I don't know, various goods like silverware, maybe some fabrics that they had, decent things like that. However... When they try to ask, that's fine. When they try to ask the people um, if they would be willing to repair the ship or perhaps give them another ship to sail home on, people are hesitant because that's pretty darn expensive. You know, they would have to trade something really good for that. And so, realizing that he really didn't have a choice in the matter, Christopher brings out the goods, the uh, jar of enchanted milk, pretty much, and he shows the locals, and he's like, "All right, this." 
This is milk from the fountain of youth. Now he's he's pretty hesitant to uh, sell it to the locals because again, if you raid talk everlasting, immortality is not all it's cracked up to be. But he shows it to the locals anyways because he really needs to get home. He really needs to fix up his ship, and the locals naturally are extremely are extremely skeptical. Bleh. Uh, they're like, are, first off, why is it milk? You know, and then second off, uh, immortality? Psh, nah, that doesn't exist. That doesn't exist. So uh, he has a bit of a hard time selling it to them. So Christopher is finally like, all right, you know what, guys? Go ahead and open the jars. Try them if you want. I mean, don't say I didn't warn you. But try them if you want. So um, he gives the jars to the locals. They're a bit skeptical. They open up the jars. And then they're like, what scam is this? This isn't even milk. It smells strange, and it's a strange consistency. And uh, Christopher looks at it, and he's like, what? And sure enough, inside, the milk has turned, like, all hard and stuff. And it's like, it smells different. It's a different consistency. He dips his finger in it, and it's, like, spongy almost. And he's like, what sorcery is this? What happened? Maybe, maybe the magic wore off. Maybe it went bad. After, you know, the huge storm and everything, it got shaken up. Maybe maybe it's not meant to travel. Maybe it's just, you know, you're supposed to drink it there at the spring or else not at all. And he was very confused until one of the locals decided, you know what? I'm just going to try it anyways. And Christopher's like, all right, I mean, do it at your own peril. I I just need to go home, man. I just need a ship. So the guy who decided to try it dips his finger into the jar and, you know, he eats it. He tries some of the stuff. And his eyes go wide. He's just like, oh my heavens. This is the best thing since sliced bread. And Christopher's like, what sliced bread? And the locals, they're just astounded that Christopher has never heard of sliced bread before. Like, what? It's a main staple of society, people. Come on. So they give him some sliced bread. And he's like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. I no longer have to slice my own bread? What? So the locals, the, the local dude that had tried it, he was like, you know what we should do? We should smear this stuff on the bread. Sounds like a great idea, right? And everyone's like, ooh, this sounds amazing. So, you know, Christopher, after the dude that tried it first kind of proved that it no longer worked as immortality juice by, like, I don't know, he ran into a wall and bumped his head or something. And he was like, ow, that hurt. It no longer works. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how immortality juice works. Anyways, uh, Christopher tries it himself, and he's like, oh, my goodness, you are right. This, this strange the strange milk substance is one of the most amazing things i have ever tried in my life and combined with this with this sliced bread it's the most powerful combination in the universe so he trades the locals for a lot of the jars and in return they agree to help him fix his ship everybody's happy and christopher and his crew sail home with a whole bunch of this substance the milk substance and a whole bunch of sliced bread and everyone's happy and so it came to be that after many more days of sailing, they finally, finally, finally end up back in Spain. They're back home. Christopher approaches the queen and she's all like, hey, uh, did you bring me my immortality juice that I wanted? And he's like, no, but uh, <laughs> I brought you one better. And he pulls out one of these jars of the strange milk substance. And she's like, what is this? And he's like, you, you have to try it. And also here's some sliced bread. So the queen tries it and she's like, oh, my goodness. You've brought me something better than immortality, better than eternal life. You've brought me this, this, this milk substance. What is it called? And he's like, aha, I had the entire boat ride to think of what it was called. He was like, I call it cheese. And here's why, your majesty. It is called cheese uh, because, you know, the CH from cheese comes from Christopher Columbus. CH and Christopher, CH and cheese, yeah. And then the E's part of cheese comes because uh, there are trees in Africa. Eh, eh, see what I did there? Trees in Africa. So he says, he calls it cheese, and she's like, oh my goodness, cheese, this is even better than a mortal life. And so Christopher Columbus is hailed a hero as the inventor of cheese. The end, I suppose. I don't know. Pretty neat story, huh? I don't know. I enjoyed it. This is looking pretty good, too, if I might add. I'm, uh, planning on... Okay, so, so here's what I'm planning. Um, this is going to be the snow globe, or the snow dome. 
or something like that. Uh, I was thinking, I need some place where I can let my bees roam free, where I can make a bee farm, because <laughs> I need a whole lot of honeycomb so that I can make a whole lot of copper so that I can build a whole lot of buildings. So this is kind of pivotal, but I was like, you know what? Bees are usually kept in greenhouses where it's all warm. This desert is already warm. What if I have like a cold place right smack dab in the middle of my desert? So that's what I'm doing here. And I have so much blue dye left over. Oh my heavens, what have I done? <laughs> and I thought I was gonna run out. I didn't need to do half the mining I needed to. Or half the mining I did. Now, I have a vague idea about what I want to do for the inside and also the exterior decorations, but that's going to be in another video. All right, we are going to take a break from building and stuff. I'm going to put on my battle suit because we need to go feed Frank. This is Frank, my lovely little skulk boy. Spade gifted him to me in one of the previous Wing SMP episodes, and for plot-related reasons, I need him to go big and strong. So uh, we need to attract some mobs. The first volunteers. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. I need your soul. I need your soul to feed my son, Frank. Ooh. Yes. Heck yeah. That's not bad for one night's work. They grow up so fast. That's it for today, so make sure to subscribe.